I feel like I'm on the set of an infomercial. Which isn't all that inaccurate, because today on Cool Prints, I'm gonna be showing you three ways that I saved money just this week using 3D printing on Cool Prints. Yep, today on Cool Prints, we're gonna be looking at prints that helped me save money, and this first one, dare I say, helped save the world. Yes, I'm a very good person. Okay, maybe that's a bit much, but I was able to revive an electronic device that would have otherwise ended up in a landfill a little bit sooner than it inevitably will. But for now, it's still working thanks to 3D printing. So for a bit of backstory, what's all this white stuff you're seeing here? Well, this is Soylent. Maybe you've heard of it. It's been around for several years and it caused quite a stir when it first came out because Soylent is what's known as a complete meal. It's essentially a drink that contains all the vitamins, minerals, nutrients that you need throughout your day. Not to be confused with Soylent Green, I'm fairly certain this doesn't contain people. You gotta tell them, Soylent Green is people! Anyways, we're getting far beyond the point. I've been using Soylent for maybe a month now, and previously I bought the bottles that are just single serving bottles. You open it, you drink it, you're fed for the day. It's a great way to save time, quite frankly. Just this week, I received my Soylent powder. It's the powder version of the drink. You basically add water and shake it up or stir it or mix it in a blender, and then you have Soylent. It's cheaper than buying the bottles, and it also doesn't waste as much by having all these individual bottles. So I got the powder. I wanted a convenient way to mix it, and I remembered that my sister used to have this magic bullet back in college. This thing right here. It's basically a little tiny powerful blender that lets you make single serving things that you have to crush up or blend, whatever. It comes with all kinds of different blades, some for chopping ice, some for grinding coffee beans, some for making smoothies. It's just what I needed to mix up my Soylent powder. So I went up into the attic and dug it up and discovered that the reason it's been up there for five years is because it was just missing one little part that was causing it not to work. The way this little blender works is it has this powerful motor in the base that spins a part that's supposed to lock into the part on this blade piece and uh, that's what causes the blade to spin and mix up your meals. But the part that connects to this part was missing on the base. Where it went, who will ever know. Maybe you see where I'm getting here. We've got this $70 blender that is basically non-functional because it's missing this tiny little piece that you can't buy anywhere. Okay, this is awkward. I'll be honest, I just looked it up and it turns out you can buy just that little tiny replacement part for like seven bucks. But the message still stands. It was still a fun project. So let's just ignore that fact for the rest of this video. Okay? Thanks. So the options were to either throw it out or turn to functional 3D printing. So here's the base of the magic bullet with this metal piece that is connected to the motor and there should be a plastic connector around that, but it's missing. That piece has to connect to this bottom part right here in order to lock together and make the blades spin. So after I used my digital caliper to measure that little metal piece as well as the part that I want to connect to, I was able to design my own replacement part in Fusion 360. Here's what I came up with. It looks pretty good. So I sent that to my Dremel 3D printer and printed it out using their Eco ABS plastic. Here's how it's meant to fit together. And boy, I did a good job modeling that one. That is a nice fit. So that part fits, but I also need to fit my print on top of this metal piece. And the hole on my model was actually undersized intentionally so that I could hopefully heat up this metal part and basically melt my printed part into place to create a really strong and permanent connection. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I was using my soldering iron to heat up this metal part and try to press down the plastic part on top of that, but it wouldn't seem to work. I guess the gear is connected to the motor and that acts as a giant heat sink. So that was making it impossible for the gear to actually get hot enough to melt my ABS part, even when the soldering iron got glowing red hot. So that idea was a bit of a bust. My next plan was to instead heat up the plastic part locally using a lighter just to heat up that inner circle. 
and hopefully get it soft enough to smush over the metal part that way. That almost worked, but not quite. So in the end, I decided to just remodel the part with the hole being just large enough to press fit on top of this metal piece. There we go, now it fits and the parts do turn together. So let's see what happens when we actually put this to use. All right, that's pretty promising. The blade is turning and it still seems to be fine. Let's try using it for a longer amount of time. Oh, okay. So this time around, it looks like the bottom of the part was rubbing against the blender and it actually melted my printed part. That's not great, but I was thinking maybe it was just making too much contact and now that it's melted away, well, let's try making some Soylent. Yeah, it's not supposed to sound like that. The printed part ended up melting even more, and it even melted part of the base of the magic bullet. So, that's not gonna work. But what if we tried using a stronger, more temperature resistant plastic, like this Tallman 618 nylon filament? This stuff is seriously tough, and it also has a much higher melting point. So let's try that instead. All right, that was just a dry run, but it's definitely holding up a lot better than the ABS part. So let's try this one more time. I realized that adding the water and ice first works better. Also, the next thing I'm printing is definitely a better scoop for this powder. Anyways, let's fire this thing up. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. All right, this time around, it didn't sound like it was dying a painful death, and the replacement part looks just as good as when I put it in. Oh yeah, 3D printing never tasted so good. I mean, look at that. I've got my perfect Soylent mix, thanks to being able to fix this little magic bullet. It was even able to crush up the ice. It's awesome, and all I had to do was replace this little tiny part. It's one of those situations where 3D printing is really ideal and where I see everyone benefiting from 3D printing at some point in the future. By the way, this video is totally not sponsored by Soylent, but I will put a referral code in the description. So if you're interested in trying it, use that code and you could get $10 off and I'll also get $10 towards my next purchase of Soylent. So you're keeping me fed and I really think it tastes great. So it's cool stuff. It kind of tastes like the milk that would be left after you eat a bowl of Cheerios, you know? <laughs> okay, so I think that was a great example of how functional prints can bring new life to a product that would have otherwise been garbage. Well, this next one is kind of similar, except I wanted to modify an existing product to better suit my needs. And I guess in a sense that kept me from having to buy a new product. I'm talking about my ceiling fan, it's right up there. If you're a regular to this channel, you may have seen some of my VR sculpting videos. And in fact, this is the very same room I use for my virtual reality setup. The one thing that's annoyed me the most about this room is the ceiling fan, but more specifically, this giant light fixture that was hanging underneath it. The ceiling fan I appreciate. It provides much needed cooling during the summer, but this giant bulky light fixture that was hanging underneath it was giving me problems. For one thing, the lights weren't very great, especially compared to my new studio light setup that I've built in other videos, but it's also hanging down so low that if I try to swing my virtual reality controllers, well, let's just say I've made contact with these lights a few too many times, and uh, yeah, I really didn't need them. I realized that I could actually unscrew this light fixture and remove it from the fan, but what's left is this giant opening with all the electronics, wires, things you don't want to be exposed. My solution was simple. Print a nice low profile cap that replaces this entire light fixture so that I can keep my ceiling fan, 
but get rid of this annoying part that I didn't need. So once again, I hopped into Fusion 360 to do my modeling, and this part was definitely easier to model. It took maybe 15 minutes. Here's my finished print, and while it did stick to the build plate a little stronger than it should have, the part itself came out looking great. So I went ahead, popped it into place on my ceiling fan, and attached it using the same screws that were holding the original light into place. There we go, that's really all that I had to do, but I also like to go above and beyond now and then, so I decided to replace the little pull cord with the same style cord that I designed for my albatross light a couple weeks ago. You know, why not balance out the feng shui of my studio with this ridiculously bright yellow and red? Here it is the next day after that E6000 dried up, and it does take a bit more of a firm tug than it used to, but it does work like a charm, it fits in with the aesthetic of the studio, and most importantly, I now have a valuable bit of extra height to swing around my VR controllers without fear. Much better. Ah, this was definitely one of the more satisfying functional prints I've done recently. Because, I mean, really, it involved a relatively small amount of design and 3D printing, but it allowed me to take this product that was created by someone else and modify it to keep the things I like and get rid of the things I don't like. It's pretty cool. On top of that, I was able to change the colors and style to make it match the rest of my room better, and that's just an added bonus. Personalization at its best. All right, I've got one more cool print for you guys today. But for this one, I am gonna need an extra hand. Oh, there we go. So this hand is attached to my girlfriend, Natalie, and we're both avid climbers, so unfortunately, it's not uncommon for us to have hand injuries from time to time. Recently, Natalie was having some pain in the top knuckle of her middle finger, and because, you know, American healthcare, she asked me if I could 3D print a brace to help her recover, and this is what I came up with. This design is based on existing oval 8 arthritic braces, and it slips over the finger just like that. And it's not really meant to apply pressure or act as a corrective brace, but rather, it's just to help prevent her from moving it excessively throughout her daily activities. It's been about a week now since Natalie has been wearing this on a daily basis, and she says it's definitely helping, and it's also comfortable, so I'm really happy with how this design ended up. And while it might look a little bit tricky, the design was actually really simple. I basically used the same technique that I shared in my last How To Make Anything video, where I showed you guys how to make these really fancy rings. And really, that's all this is. It's just a ring, but it provides support in just the right places to help speed up recovery. Now, however simple it is, it wasn't my first design. I actually started out with this thing right here. I've seen a handful of 3D printed casts that cover entire arms and legs, and oftentimes they have some kind of Voronoi or wireframe structure like this, so I thought it could work as the little finger brace. And it does fit, but it's just not very comfortable, and it has too many points of contact that really weren't necessary. That's when I started leaning more in the direction of those oval 8 braces, and I came up with these prints that are printed flat, and then heat it up with a lighter and kind of mold it into the shape that they need to be. These did work a little bit better, but they were also more aggressive than they needed to be, and they just weren't very comfortable. I thought I could improve on that by printing a similar design, but using flexible filament. So I printed this version using Filamentum's Pistachio Green Flex Fill, but this one was kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, and it didn't provide quite enough support. In the end, I came up with this design, and it works really well. It's very comfortable because it's all smooth surfaces that are wrapping around your finger. It's simple, and it prints without support material, which is great. From here, we just had to print a few different sizes until we got the perfect fit, and there we had a really nice, perfectly functional finger brace. All right, that's it for today's video. I'd love to know your thoughts on my different designs today, so go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you liked what you saw, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But that's it for today, so until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and of course, stay inspired.